If you can hear me, please give me a message. Give a message to the host, please, if you can hear me. So we have Dr. Sahu today. Dr. Sahu is a special doctor of Chandruban, Chandru Didi of San Francisco Center. Thank you. So Dr. Uh, Sahu started a very um, popular project. It's called Holistic Approach to Diabetes. And that got really got very much popularity and uh, it is really worth 
following. So today we have a, a in true sense international gathering on this Zoom today from USA, India, Canada, and maybe many more places. doctor is saying that he feels like he is really physically here at San Francisco and he's very glad to see the faces whose cameras are on. So if you can turn the camera on to delight the speaker, please turn your camera on. I studied uh, the med medical school, I became a scholar, but I didn't have any, any other knowledge, like who am I, from where I have come, how to keep the mind always happy. I didn't know all that. All of that knowledge I got from Baba. I was so much under stress that I was actually thinking that I will get a heart attack or I will have some other diseases in body at a very young age. But then my life's changed in a month. The sisters, Didi's at Madhuban, they're all so amazing. They gave me so much knowledge. And then I decided finally that I joined again in 1986. And but in 1991, Baba just blessed me, showered with a lot of blessing because they opened a new hospital in Mount Abu. And I just, uh, in a second, I resigned from my current job and just joined Madhuban and uh, just started giving seva at the hospital. We get blessings from Dadis and Didis and Baba all the time. I'm just like a little kid here. My life is so beautiful, always singing in joy and happy. Now I will share some uh, things which is very, very re much required in current time. So on behalf of Madhuban and Bab Dada, and all of us at Madhuban, I'm welcoming all of you from bottom of my heart. So today's topic is balancing body and mind. Very beautiful topic. Some people neglected their bodies. They just uh, ran after the career and money and then they fell sick. And some people just, they are, they are just after the body. They just keep exercising for even eight hours. And some people turn antisocial. So why have we come into this society? We souls were sitting in Paramdham, in our incorporeal world. Why have we come here? We came here to manifest 
to manifest through this body. and to enjoy this life fully, blissfully. We have so many gadgets, science, uh, entertainment, food, to joy and enjoy. So we must enjoy the life at fullest, but whoever keeps the balance between in body and mind, only that person can enjoy the life fullest. So I have a beautiful gift for all of you. If our body is not healthy, then it gives a lot of pain. If it is healthy, then we enjoy the life a lot. Otherwise, we are just sitting in a couch or in a bed. So the health of the body and mind is a valuable gift. Mind, healthy mind is also a, an invaluable jewel in the physical body. So both body and mind, they're very, very priceless. So as the slide says, the driver, our souls are no matter how smart we are, but if that if the car is not in good health, if car is not running properly, then what is the use of driver skills? That's why it is very important to keep both the, the driver and the car healthy. The human body is just, is just like a car. Where, wherever we go, we take the mind first and then we act physically actually go. So the mind is the driver. So we have to keep mind and body in a good state of health. If body is not uh, healthy, then we cannot meditate. We cannot be in yoga with Baba. Even Brahma Baba, he was six feet high, uh, six feet height tall. And he used to do a lot of exercise. He was very much, uh, uh, he had very stout body. And that is why he could do all this seva. In this confluence age, if we get a beautiful, healthy body, that is really a fortune. If we get sick, we lose a lot of time. So how to be healthy? We need to know that. If the mind is healthy, body is healthy. If body is healthy, mind is healthy. It's vice versa, they're correlated. So that's why we need to keep both of them healthy and in happy situation. So if we get sick often, that, then it means we lack something. We need to understand something 
in detail. So if we breathe in the polluted air, we drink polluted drinks, we do not eat healthy food, all of that can contribute in bad health. So in this Kali Yuga or Confluence Age, certain sicknesses are uh, because of our mistake or maybe mistake from others or other factors. So if we follow certain rules, we can be 99% healthy. There is no one in this world who did not fall sick at least once in the lifetime. So why we fall sick? It's a wrong lifestyle. The so latest statement from WHO or International Health Organization is that our kids may die before us because the food our kids eat is completely unhealthy. In a very young, yeah, at a very young age, they get uh, diabetes, blood pressure, heart problems. In earlier times, we used to play many outdoor games. Like our mothers had, had to pull us forcefully into the house. And the, today, the time is different. Mothers had to send kids out <laughs> outside of the home forcefully to play. So the lifestyle is very, very sedentary. It is same for adults and children. The lifestyle, work habits, work requirements, and all of this contribute to sedentary and stressful lifestyle. Even if we are at home, the means of enjoying entertainment is just sitting in a couch and watch TV and eat. USA has a biggest health issue is about obesity. And the prolonged sitting for work that is very much uh, hazardous. The person who is sitting uh, certain hours, more than certain hours in a day, definitely gonna get diabetes. So we must get rid of the sedentary lifestyle. Just wake up every couple hours, get up from the chair, move around. And then this other thing is stress. Stress is the burning problem in these days. More than 60% of humans' illness and diseases are because of the stress. The certain type of cancers, kidney problems, heart problems, stroke, all of these are mainly due to stress. So the stress is a state of mental disharmony. We all the time we keep thinking what will happen, how this will happen, and in, in overburden of these thoughts and how to uh, bring the things to the actual conclusion, we 
we are so much stressed so let us know uh first who is physically healthy what what do you think if someone is uh looking handsome or beautiful what is the definition of healthy for you which means the person who can do exercise eats healthy sleeps well has an optimum weight blood pressure is fine temperature is normal uh, when all of these are at, all at one time in one person then we can say that person is healthy So the most important step for a healthy body is love your body. We don't take care of our body. We don't eat well, we don't sleep well. We don't take we don't take care of our body. How much uh, care we take of our cars we keep them clean we polish them we uh, get it washed we get it tuned all change on time but we don't do all of that for our body The body is very, very valuable. If someone is asking us to give a million dollar for a part of our body, for a finger, are we going to give it to them? No, because we cannot get it again. So in confluence age, this body is very, very valuable. It is through this body we do the highest elevated efforts and get into the 21 verse hereditary heritage from baba so how to achieve a healthy body so the number one is holistic exercise So the holistic exercise means all kind of exercises, like how we eat uh, so many things uh, as a healthy diet. Same way, exercise also has to be a well-rounded exercise. We will see what is holistic exercises uh, later on. So first of all, let's see why do we need to exercise? We have become so much sedentary. We have so much gadgets. We have the TV, couch, cell phones, tablets, iPads, laptops. What not do we have? Uh, and just uh, to spend the whole day. Compared to the old days, we didn't have anything. Even in, in kitchen, we didn't have all the gadgets. We, all, we had to do all this uh, by uh, our hands. So we used to spend a lot of energy, use the body parts. So that, that was like keeping the body in action and moving. And these days, we have so many gadgets in kitchen. We hardly use our body to do anything. So if, for example, if we don't 
drive our car, we just keep it in, parked in garage, is it gonna run well? No, we have to keep it driving. So the same way we have to keep using or keep exercise this body. So if we exercise, it will boost our immunity. So the doctor is saying that um, uh, so many got COVID. I didn't get it. My staff got COVID. My uh, the doctors got COVID. Nurses got COVID. I was all fine. So number two is exercises reduces possibility of diseases, diabetes, cancer, heart disease. Exercise decreases the body fat and it strengthens the bones, muscles, and makes the body energetic. And the, it also helps reduce the stiffness and improves coordination and mobility of the uh, skeleton, all the joints of the body. So the exercise has very well-rounded benefits. And, by exercise, we it also helps reducing chronic pain. Exercise will clear the blood vessels. It will strengthen the heart, improve the circulation, and oxygenate the whole body. The oxygen will circulate in the whole body so much that all the cells of the body are refreshed and energized. And that, that is how it detoxifies the body as well. And when the blood circulation is well, the skin gets so much blood supply. So it, it also improves the complexion. Now next, the mental benefits of exercise. So number one is it decreases stress. It, because it releases the good chemicals in the body, which helps reduce the stress. It will boost the mood, keeps the euphoria up. It's, it's like a I'm good kind of uh, happy, healthy feeling. We must remain very happy. And that comes through exercise. The exercise improves the memory, exercise and overall, by all of these benefits, it improves the quality of life. And ultimately, it will increase the lifespan. So now let's see what is exercise. Exercise is the voluntary and repetitive movement of a group of muscle for a period of time. Exercise is very, very important. So in this slide, one is doing the heel climber, and the other one is doing the push-up. So they are doing the repetitive movements of this group of muscles. That's how they strengthen those group of muscles. Now, what? how many types of exercises? That one is aerobic. In aerobic exercise, we use oxygen for a sustained period. So it is a repetitive fast movements. It makes, it makes us breathe faster. So we use more oxygen. And other type of exercise is anaerobic, which does not require much oxygen uh, and, short period of ex and short period of exercises. Like lifting weights does not make us breathe fast. And there is, this asanas, yoga asanas. So these yoga asanas decrease the 
stress, improve insulin sensitivity in body. So it uh, prevent the diabetes and other many other problems. The yoga asanas are postural exercises. They also reduce stress. And there are other exercises are breathing exercises. Breathing exercises are good for respiratory system. So from all of these exercises, which one is the best? No one single, we cannot single out. All of these has to be done in a balanced way. We need all four kind of exercises. Then we can say we, we are doing holistic exercise. Exercise which is good for our mind, body, and soul. At the global hospital, every morning, we do exercises. One day we do upper body, one day we do lower body, one day we do walking yoga. And there are all kind of all, there are people joining from all ages. So we have this YouTube channel, Daily Exercise for You by Dr. Sriman on YouTube. If you subscribe, you will get uh, the notifications. Many people lost weight in six to eight months and they have become fit. And they're all holistic exercises. WHO also recommends to, and the aim for one should aim for at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity each week. The, the moderate or greater intensity muscle strength activities on a regular basis at least twice a week. So if the muscles are stronger, we can be balanced and we walk straight. We can be strengthful to do all the daily activities that we do. Any, remember, exercise is a lifelong commitment. Exercise has no long-term effect on glucose within 24 to 48 hours of cessation. The beneficial effects on diabetes and its control are lost. So we must continue doing exercise every single day. If we don't do, we stop exercising, then we lose the control of the body. See, so if we have, to, we have so much time to watch TV, surf the net, but we don't have time to exercise, that's not an excuse. So we must stop being lazy. It's only half an hour a day, half an hour in 24 hours. If we just keep using the body, using the body, it's not going to work like that. We have to take care of it by doing holistic exercises. We need to do some precautions as well. We start exercising slowly and go slow. If we get tired, do the heart beats high. If, if we feel any discomfort, if we feel uneasy, then we should sit down and take rest. If doctor has not 
told uh, doctor has told us not to do certain movements then we must not do it we cannot do exercise on a full stomach we can uh, eat uh, just a little bit of snacking and do exercise we have to be very well hydrated if someone has uncontrolled diabetes and high blood pressure then avoid doing exercises if your if your blood sugar is high and if you exercise your blood sugar will go higher up if your blood sugar is low and if you exercise your blood sugar will go more lower so do be uh, watchful for those things too we need a good shoes and so uh, socks to do certain exercises we have to do warm up exercises and cool down exercises as well so the next thing is healthy diet so it, no matter how much exercise we do but if we don't eat well it's not going to work the hippocrates said let food be the medicine what does it mean if we eat the healthy diet it will keep us away from the diseases and away from medications you don't have to eat less you just have to eat right choose the healthy food we need to choose what is healthy and what is not healthy for us we have to see how much fat or how much trans fat preservatives fiber fat protein carbs and all of that the human body is a vegetarian body we must eat the vegetarian food if we don't fill the car with a proper fuel it's not going to run well look at this slide and the woman is uh, working in the laptop and just it just she just keeps eating so we must not eat while working while talking we cannot keep track how much we eat i remember in my childhood if we talk while eating my grandfather used to say don't talk in these days we do a lot of chit chat while eating at dining table if by mistake the food goes in into the wind pipe it's going to uh, create a lot of problem we don't eat we don't need to rush while eating we don't need to talk we while while eating we just eat mindfully and meditatively so we need to be a little bit careful about all these things so the healthy diet is a balanced diet so balance between the macro and micro nutrient so like we all know about carbohydrate protein and fat these are macro nutrients in my micronutrients are the vitamins minerals and all that we need all of that as well if 
if we don't have that, we will have the deficiency of certain vitamins. We get anemia. So in India, the full complete meal has everything in it. There is a uh, Indian roti, vegetable, lentil, rice. So it is a very well balanced diet. We must balance the calories according to the body needs. Everyone needs different calories. If we are not using the body, if we are not moving around much, we don't need to eat much. Versus someone who is working so hard physically, that person need more food. If you want to reduce the weight, you only need to eat 1200 calories. So all the vegetables except potatoes, 400 grams of vegetable has 25 calories. All the fruits has 50 calories except madana and mango. So one apple is 200 grams, so it has 100 calories. So and when we eat the grains, the grains has the cooked grains like rice, lentil, millet, all of those. 100 gram has 100 calories. And whatever fried food we eat or desserts, or sweets, all of those 400 gram, they have 500 calories. And the fats like oil, butter, um, Ghee, all of those has 1,000 calories per 100 gram. Balanced number of meals in a day. In Madhavan, Baba started four meals per day. So the, the Supreme Father started this routine, eating four times, two big meals and two other times snacking. We don't need to fast. Whatever we cook, we offer it to Baba and then we eat. So we need to eat optimum amount of food four times in a day. In today's time, people don't eat for the whole day. And at the end of the day, when they come home, they eat a lot. They eat so much food at the end of the day. And that's not balanced. If we keep the meal time same every day, then our health will be maintained. Right meals at right time.
if we don't eat for a longer time then the blood sugar get, goes down if we eat lot then the blood sugar goes high so let's talk about the vegetables green vegetables they're food with limited restrictions you can eat how how much you want we must wash vegetables under the running water thoroughly and then we so we must soak the vegetables in in water adding uh three spoons of salt that will take all the impurities on the surface out we can drink buttermilk tomato soup vegetable soup they are these are low calorie foods so rice butter ghee papadam pickles the chutneys all of milk all of these are, are has to be restricted food so this fried food looks so yummy but it has a it has a lot of calorie 500 calories per 100 grams so if we eat the whole plate full of this food how many calories would we eat condensed milk syrups cold drinks juices fruit juices alcoholic beverages sugar cane juice bon vita all of these food should be avoided so as far as possible we must avoid the junk food and fast food let's talk about the fruits we can eat whatever fruit we want to eat so nuts are also very and dry fruits are also very high in calories so we should not eat them that much oils olive oil sunflower oil and rice bran these are the good brands of oil we must use different like at least four varieties of oils we should not eat only one type of oil all the time 500 ml of oil per month per person is the proper amount of oil so if we keep four different types of oil and use them like canola oil olive oil peanut oil um then we have in calories and also very very rich in trans fatty acids injurious for health donuts burgers these are all uh food with preservatives fat high in calorie sodium they don't have any fiber so let's talk about the thali the indian thali plate so the big portion is around this is starch cereal is the roti so the recommended thali is that second thali everything is in same amount 
and the milk or curd is the small portion. If you want to eat rice in the shown uh, plate, then you reduce the amount of the chapati and add rice. Well, brother, this is a typical Indian food, very yummy and healthy food. Avoid fisting and fasting. Both of them are not good for health. Water, eight to 10 glasses of water per day. If we don't drink enough water, we get constipated. If we get constipated, our intestines will be uh, obstructed and the digestion will be not uh, working well and then the, it will create the whole vicious cycle. So the next thing is good rest. In Indian culture is early to rise, early to bed, early to rise. And then while we are sleeping, check, is your sleep adequate? In this time, we, we, we stay up so late and then we wake up so late. So the science is saying that both excess and in inadequate sleep can cause diabetes and heart disease. Baba says that uh, people outside of the kyan, they need eight hours sleep, but the yogis need half amount of sleep. So I experimented a lot uh, this way that way and then for us yogis we need at least five hours of sleep if we are not sleeping adequately while working while talking if we just keep yawning that's not good so inadequate sleep may increase your blood pressure diabetes to 28%, obesity goes to 35%. So there are seven tips for a sound sleep at night. Keep a fixed time for going to bed at night. Create a sleep hygiene, create this favorable atmosphere so that body knows that now it's time to go to sleep. Have a sun bath of at least two hours daily. It means go out in the sun. Meditate regularly to reduce your tensions and stress. And don't take long naps in afternoon. Avoid alcohol or caffeine before going to bed. Alcohol and caffeine are stimulant. It will keep you awake. And don't watch TV or work on computer lying at your bed. So a sound and undisturbed sleep for five to six hours at night is must for all of us. The stress hormones released from the brain are quiet 
quite less in individuals who have good sleep between 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. So we must watch these hours. We, we must sleep in these hours. So we learned how about all of these healthy uh, routines for healthy body. So now let's talk about healthy mind. How, how can we have a healthy mind? So let's talk about exercises for the mind. If the doctors, doctors generally say that if you want to be healthy, you eat well, exercise and rest. But how can we keep the mind healthy? There is a living energy in our body and we call that energy soul. And the soul is the master of all the senses. The sensory, sens sensory organs like eyes, nose, ears, mouth or lips, the, the speaking and the touch. And then we have three powers. The power of thought, intellect, and the sanskar. These are the impressions, the grooved habits, experiences, and personality traits. So the mind gets the idea. We take decision by intellect. And then based upon whatever the repeated habits or repeated traits that person has, they will keep thinking on that line. So that's called sanskar. So the mind is the soul. So the soul is thinking. So for mental exercise, we will use our mind and intellect. First, let's see, mind plus intellect means thoughts plus visualization. And, let's con and that gives a concentration. So sitting in our home in USA, we see the picture of Taj Mahal. So by with open eyes, we see the Taj Mahal, but if our eyes are closed and if someone says Taj Mahal, we see the same picture in our intellect. That is our mind is thinking, our thought is thinking, the soul is thinking. If we think, give name of Swami Vivekanand, if we give name of any person, if someone says Himalaya, we will immediately have the picture, uh, picture in our intellect. So the thoughts and the visualization together makes the concentration. So while mental exercising, we have to think something and then visualize it and then focus. So while exercising physically, whatever uh, we want the body to do, we will do that. Just like that, for mental exercise, we can get the mind to do whatever we want to do. 
and if we can have the mind exercise for how much time we want to then we can say that yes we need mental exercise so if let's talk about the shanti stamp if i say let's all of us stand in front of shanti stamp are you all st uh, uh, standing in front of shanti stamp the st uh, the tower of peace yes if yes then next i would say you all are getting the strength lot of power by standing there and then you do get it so by intellect we can get the things done whatever we want to do uh, with mind so positive thinking is necessary because positive thinking evokes more energy more initiative and more happiness in our uh, being just like how we cannot uh, we don't eat uh anything on healthy to keep the body healthy we don't pick any unhealthy thoughts negative thoughts and keep uh, just a positive things positive thoughts with us to keep mind healthy like see in the slide how how do you like to be how would you like to be seen smiley or a uh, stressful face so the how how we think that will affect our mind and our being so the mind ha has thoughts and the thoughts are four types of thoughts positive thoughts necessary thoughts unnecessary this is waste thoughts in the negative thoughts unnecessary thoughts are like the thoughts where we don't have to do anything we don't have a power to change anything and if we keep thinking those that's the waste thoughts and the negative are no one uh, in Uh, these thoughts helps no one these thoughts harms the thinker and the other person so if how you eat healthy you feel uh, powerful same way if we think good our mind is good so the mind is a friend too and my and mind is enemy as well a positive mind is a true friend so when when the mind is enemy it will create bad thoughts for us So the mind power has four levels memory attitude thoughts and emotions so the whatever memory we have we have the attitude as per that attitude makes our thought process like that and then th whatever thoughts we have we develop the emotions based upon that so for example 50 years back if a dog has bitten that is our memory it will create an attitude in us that dog dogs bite and that dogs bite will create certain thoughts and then emotion it, it will be executed as fear of dog so the positive mind is very powerful creative and purposeful and the negative mind is devastating devitalizing and destructive yes. 
we see the destructive minds uh, create the destructive things and damage and harm the whole world. So the, our mood decides our food. What are the causes of stress? No concentration in studies. How can we be positive and strong, have strong willpower? How to think positively? In, in these days, very few has the positivity and positive thinking, ability to think positive. I can read your mind by sitting here. I will give you a word and you have to make a sentence. I, just, I give a word, the, uh, the word body and you make sentence. Based upon your mentality, the, you will make that type of sentence. The, the doctor gave the word rose flower, make a sentence. So if we say rose is red, offer the rose to Baba, these are all neutral thoughts. Let's say mother. We will say my mom is very nice. My mom gave me this food. These are all neutral, normal thoughts. So what can be a positive thought? Now let's uh, uh, say a positive statement for Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda, uh, we can say many uh, statements for Swami Vivekananda, Vivekananda but these are all, all again, neutral thoughts. Let's say about COVID-19. We will say COVID-19, wow, that's terrifying, terrifying, killer, blah, blah, blah. All these thoughts are again, neutral thoughts. And if we, if we say COVID-19 kills this many people, that many people here and there, so much destruction, devastation, loss of shops, these are all negative thoughts. Now about blood. If, say, if we can say blood is red, blood, A group blood, B group blood, Donate blood, blah blah. They so the the facts which are known to everyone, they are neutral thoughts. the The facts already known. Uh, these are neutral thoughts. They they are not gonna impact any which way on us. So let's say uh, we must donate blood. We should donate blood. That is a neutral thought because we are not involved in that. But instead, if I say I donate blood every three months, then it has some positivity in, in it. Because we are involved in it. For 
for COVID-19, if we say we will, we will eradicate the COVID-19 from throughout the world, we will keep working until then, then it is an active positive statement because we are ourselves is involved in it. For the word mother, if we say, I want to be like Mother Teresa, then we are involved, I, we involve ourselves in it. So that's an active positive statement. For the rose flower, we say how the rose uh, blooms among the thorns, just like that, I will be like a rose flower, no matter how people are uh, uh, surrounding me. Then it is a positive statement. So from where we get this positive thoughts? We get this positive thoughts from Baba's Murli. Each and every sentence of the Murli is, has a deep meaning to it. Baba says, I am, uh, I am, uh, Baba is almighty and Baba makes us master almighty. Baba feels so much power in us. Each word coming from Baba has a tremendous strength of positivity. So what knowledge Baba is giving us is full of positivity. So the next is mental rest. Mental rest is positive thoughts, state of positive thoughts in Raja Yoga is that a disciplined way of life, a, the supreme of all types of yoga. Raja Yoga is the best yoga of all the yoga. Makes man divine but full of values, the art and science for complete health. Raja, Raja Yoga fills us up with the supreme divine thoughts. It fills us with the divine thoughts of values. Just like how the Krishna is telling the Arjuna and yoga that is, that is from Gita, Just by physical yoga, we cannot attain. So the goal of physical yoga is is the uh, is to have the uh, easy sitting posture to achieve that and to sit in that posture and just get uh, in uh, get lost into the divinity and when we are focused and lost in that one divine energy we get rid of all the mental illnesses and we become positive. The word yoga is for union of our mind with the Supreme Father. So the ancient yoga is the Raj Yoga meditation. This is uh, these are some uh, texts 
verses from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, and it says that in all of all yogis, he who always remembers me with great faith, abiding by my Srimad, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. Means we need to be united with intimately with the divine. In the Raja Yoga meditation is releasing the self as a soul. It is a very, very disciplined way of life to keep us ever healthy, ever wealthy, and ever happy. And it's not confined. It's not confined to just the physical exercise only. It is the way of life. It is a lifestyle which keeps us healthy by mind, body, and spirit. It is also a science of positive thinking. Look in the slide, the thoughts and the response. Negative thoughts has negative responses and it affects our hormonal glands, pituitary glands and adrenal axis, adrenal axis and that creates the stress hormone cortisol and then it is activating the sympathetic nervous system which then creates diseases in the body versus the positive thoughts are releasing good chemicals and affects the parasympathetic the rest and digest um, uh, stimulation in the body and ultimately that heals the body so Raja Yoga meditation is the surest medica medication for stress. So th then comes the self-realization. Who am I? I am a point of light soul. My qualities are love, peace, joy, blissfulness, purity, knowledge and wisdom. The three things in life are very valuable. Body, healthy body, healthy mind, holistic exercises, mental exercise, is the Raja Yoga meditation. And, but there are other three things in life which, is, which are necessary is health, wealth, and happiness. If we... Can we pick any one of this, health or wealth? No. For the first 50 years of life, we run after the wealth and neglecting our health. In the first half, it's just no care of body. And that brings the second half so miserable. We, we get impaired and impacted by diseases. So the first, the old Indian saying is, health is wealth. Mahatma Gandhi said, it is health that is real wealth and not the pieces of gold or silver. Can we pick any one of these, wealth or happiness? Many people give priority to wealth, but money will never make us happy in real sense. If you are an,
So the happiness does not depend on what you have or who you are. It, it, is, it solely relies on what you think. We, we uh, looked at um, this uh, aspect earlier, how the mind thinks, it creates the attitudes and emotions. So what, what is prioritized, health or happiness? So the Dalai Lama said, happiness is the highest form of health. In the journey of life, it will, it will be raining at times, there will be sunshine. It, it's just, that's how the life goes on. The journey is variable, but never forget. Don't forget to smile again and again. There will be pleasure and pain. It's a cycle, it goes on and on. But one th thing we must keep constant is to keep smiling all the time. Laughter is an antidote for all diseases. Be happy. Happiness, being joyful is our character, is our quality. Always laugh when you can because it is the cheapest medicine. Cheapest and I would say uh, best available. So keep smiling all the time. Wow, that, that picture is so <laughs> happy and joyful. It makes me smile and laugh as it is. So thank you very much. Om Shanti.